Hello and welcome to the special edition of Young Turks from Surge 2016. We are coming to you from India's startup capital, Bengaluru. I'm Shruti Mishra. And I'm Sana Denugara. CNBC TV18's Young Turks is proud to have partnered with Surge for its inaugural conference in India. Over five years, Dubliner Paddy Cosgrave has grown Web Summit into one of the world's most influential technology conferences. Surge is incredible. Our first Web Summit had just 400 people. Five years later, it was 42,000 people. The first Surge is already 12 times larger than the first Web Summit. And we've got attendees not from just one country, India, but from 72 countries around the world. Over 23rd and 24th February, Bangalore played host to Web Summit's first India Startup Conference. Young Turks hosted the finale session on day one with the founder of one of the world's most active early stage VCs, Dave McClure. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, there's any lack of talent in India. 500 startups launched a $25 million investment fund called 500 Kulfi for India, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, focusing on early stage companies. We began by asking him what's keeping him bullish about the subcontinent. I don't think it's a complete, you know, 2000, 2001 type of scenario. I don't even think it's the 2008, 9 scenario. I think it's really just valuations coming down and people looking for value when they're investing. Good companies, I think, will be able to raise money, even though they might have to work at the valuation to get there. Uh, companies without, you know, positive unit economics that are maybe spending too much are going to have, you know, some challenges, and that's that's going to weave its way into the rest of the market. All right. When did you see this coming, and what was the kind of uh, notice, if at all, you put out to companies in your portfolio, not just in India but in other emerging markets as well? Well, I, I don't think we are generally focused on Series B and C sort of stories. Most of our investments are happening right. at Accelerator and Seed and maybe Series A. Uh, for our companies, really, they're just trying to find how to grow. They're find, you know, trying to figure out product market fit, get their first million dollars in revenue. So I don't think that story really is that much different. Uh, a statement that you made, I want to tie this in with a bigger global debate around net neutrality. Uh, and India and Facebook. Uh, so you've said that uh, Instagram, Facebook videos, Pinterest, YouTube, Snapchat, all of these provide a good platform for distribution. And you are actually bullish on this space and looking at startups that feed into this. Uh, where yes. do you stand on this thesis? And then when you saw what was happening with uh, Facebook and the Free Basics program in India, what's your stand? Well, I think there's been a lot of arguments about whether that Free Basics is a good thing or a bad thing. Um, uh, Facebook's a very aggressive company and they want to try and you know, get products out to market as soon as possible. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a really developing ecosystem in India that deserves the opportunity to grow itself. And I, I think, you know, maybe having just one option or one set of options isn't going to be the most beneficial choice, even if it takes maybe a little bit longer to figure out how to make that a uh, level playing field. I, I think there are going to be opportunities for Indian companies and Indian products and services to be in that mix. So I think that's important. Uh, maybe there's a few folks in the U.S. who uh, don't understand kind of what that option or opportunities can present, uh, but I do think that's really important. I think that, you know, you can't just have a country where everyone's consuming products that are coming from the U.S. Um, those products have to be global in nature and they have to have an opportunity to be built everywhere around the world. Uh, otherwise, it's just... It's not going to be a fair shake for everybody. For startups that are looking to feed into these sort of delivery platforms, you know, the, the Facebooks, the Snapchats. Primarily around, I think, but visual platforms, so pictures, videos, and eventually virtual reality and augmented reality. Okay. So I think those are great opportunities to sell other products, uh, to have customers experience what's going on. And I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg in, her, in terms of how visual platforms are going to be able to present products and services to customers. Uh, in particular, I think looking at products like Instagram and Snapchat and other video-based platforms, you know, just going to explode over the next few years. I, I don't think you'll, you'll see any type of e-commerce or other type of business that's conducted without having visual platforms be pushing those products in the near future. What you're seeing in India compared to other emerging markets that you're now uh, actively playing in, uh, what are some of the similarities uh, and differences? Right now, Southeast Asia is probably the largest opportunity that we've been seeing outside the U.S. where we see a fully developed ecosystem and there's lots of investors playing in that, uh, in that world. There's local investors, there's investors from Japan and China and Korea as well. Uh, there's European and U.S. investors. I think India is probably the second biggest opportunity after that that's also starting to fill in now. 
Uh, still a little bit, you know, maybe uh, controversial at times, but I think you're going to see a lot of other international investors, not just Indian investors, in that market. And it's really, it's the future. Uh, I think after that, people are starting to look at Africa and Latin America as the next wave of markets. But right now, I see that there's just going to be a huge amount of opportunity in Southeast Asia and India for us. And we're going to really double down over that on both of those over the next five years. In particular, I think financial services, fintech, uh, education technology, and then healthcare and services are just really op big opportunities for a country as large as India. And I don't think we've even touched the opportunities there yet. We've been investing maybe about 10 to 15 companies a year. Last year, about 24. 24, yes. Um, but I think there's easily a lot more that we can be doing. So I, I expect that we'll be doing at least 30 to 50 companies a year in India, and possibly even more than that uh, going forward. So Dave McClure is betting big on education, fintech, healthcare, and SaaS. And of course, through the year, we'll be bringing you ideas and stories of what he's doing with the new micro fund, of course. All right, on that note, it's time for a break. Stay tuned. <laughs>